Welcome back to the Elsa Rar podcast. And today I'm back with a guest who's been with us before, a favourite of ours and the brand. It's Martine Alexander, fashion stylist to the stars. We're going to get all the lowdown on what's great for autumn. So hi, Martine. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Oh, it's so nice to be back. Yeah, it's great to have you back. Um, we had a lot of viral moments out of the last one, didn't, didn't we? Didn't we? Didn't we? It was all around trends. I think it was stuff that people can relate to. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for asking me back. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. So um, talk to me about autumn. We're getting into autumn. Mm. You know, I mean, did we even have a summer? We did a little bit, didn't we? Christ, we had about four days. I got the paddling pool out for about four days and that was it. That. Yeah. Like, I saw that on your Instagram. Yeah. yeah. But um, I feel like we've not even had a summer. So I've not even, the whole, and I didn't even watch any of the Olympics. They're so busy in work. So I've definitely not had a summer. So I'm actually really gearing up towards autumn, winter, and I want to know where I should be portioning some spend. So we've got a lot of trends coming up for autumn and I'm like you. I just, I want to wear shorts, but I'm cold. Mm. So I feel like, do I go away in September and have a holiday or do I just invest that money into my wardrobe for autumn, winter and start planning it now? Because there's so many trends coming out for autumn. I can't begin to tell you. I, I thought to myself, if you're going to ask me, I'm going to have to get my phone out. So at some point I might get my phone That's out. absolutely fine. But... The key thing I would say is brown is the new black. That's that's a given. So if you're wearing black, we're softening it a little bit with browns and introducing a lot of burgundy, which we had last year, but it's coming through for this year again. Introducing khaki. Um, so all, all tones of brown will be beautiful together, very autumnal, thinking the leaves and everything like that. Suede. Suede is huge, whether it's sh yeah. suede bag, okay, suede jacket. I mean, we were talking before about mm. suede jackets, shoes, suede shoes, um, hats, like baseball caps that are suede. So there's there's so much coming out. I could go on and on and on oh, about it. Please do. That's why we're here. <laughs> well, so suede, it, so it talks to me about like, I mean, suede scares me a bit, especially if I'm going to spend some decent money on suede because mm -hmm. I've still got some Stuart Wiseman suede boots and I swear to God, I treat them like, oh my God, they are, you know, I've really treated them well because I can wreck expensive stuff. I really do wreck it because I think when well, I'm wearing it, I'm using it, it's going to get wrecked. I don't know who these people are who have pristine handbags because the way I treat mine, you know, they're, they're like workhorses to me. Yeah, they've, they've, got, got they've got to work. They've got to work. Yeah, they've... Or these people who wear it once and then what, you know, keep it in the original packaging. What's the bloody... What's like, the point? It's like when you get a new phone and you keep the silver, the, oh. the little plastic thing on it. Yeah, mine's so all smashed. You, mine's all smashed. Um, <laughs> but do you know what? I'm the same as you. For me, if I'm going to invest in something, it's got to work hard for me. Mm. And I've got to get the cost per wear. And I was thinking, okay, right, suede jacket. Suede shoes is different because if you protect them and re-protect and re-protect, you can keep the life in it. But that's that's a different subject altogether. But with regards to suede jackets, for me, it's something that I don't feel like is going to be in my wardrobe for years and years mm, and years. I agree. So for me, I'm looking at vintage. So I've been on Vinted. Um, there are some brilliant um, vintage companies that upcycle, that are sustainable. And that's kind of what I think for me is where I'm going to go. And I would advise my clients to do that as well. So I've been looking on Vinted for men's blazers um, in probably a 36, 38, because I don't want the shoulder to be too exaggerated, but equally you could if you wanted it to be really on trend um, and get a brown one or a beige one or a tan or a khaki and that you don't have to spend a small fortune in places like Massimo Dutti or The Row um, or Mango have got them, but they're still 300 pounds. So something like shopping vintage for something like that is a great a great high street or a great alternative solution in my opinion i'm remembering a fraser episode here i'm phrase i'm like the biggest fan of fraser ever yeah. Right. Here she goes. And the, right, I've totally mm. got off on a tangent. But the dad, Marty, says, you know what you need? He just got dumped again, Fraser. And he said, you know what you need? A suede jacket. And he's like, why? And he said, because all the ladies want to come and touch it. Oh. And um, and that's what I'm thinking as you're talking about suede so jackets. Because people want to come pour it. 
if I'm a single girl, does that mean all, this, the, men are, all the men are going to want to come and Can I touch, touch you to my jacket? jacket? Maybe. Who knows? It sounds wrong, though, if a man said that to me. How about that? Go away. <laughs> do you get approached in bars much? No. Do you give off the fit? Do you give <laughs> off the vibe of, uh, like, I'm approachable? Or do you give off the vibe, like, fuck off go away no I no I think it probably comes down to the fact that I don't go in bars yeah so. I just don't know I just don't feel like that's for me anymore I don't drink so I'm quite happy sat in a coffee shop and hopefully someone will come up but no I never ever get approached let's try Marty's trick with the suede jacket <laughs> yeah let, let's start it, with that yeah and see what happens how a suede jacket changed my love life <laughs> what a headline that would be I could That'll see that being back for part three yeah I could literally see that being a Daily Mail headline I could write that <laughs> no problem right let's... how a suede jacket changed my love well, life well you never know there might be someone single watching this or listening yeah, to this absolutely <laughs> um, okay so we've gone off on a tangent so suede is big suede is big hats jackets bags shoes shoes yeah suede leopard print well it's never been out leopard. no but it does my head in this oh leopard print back in fashion when was it ever out but but i think it went through that phase where it was a little bit frumpy a little bit pat butcher a little bit bet lynch never not in my world it, i've got leopard print world. carpets <laughs> do you yeah in my wardrobe shoe wardrobe i've got a leopard print carpet you need to send me a picture of that yeah I will, no problem. And I've got like four leopard print coats. Everybody knows me. One of our brand colours is leopard print. Interesting. Well, yeah. you're so on trend. Yeah. But I think for for spring, summer, it was really trendy. And now it's kind of going even bigger. But And, and I, I wrote an article the other day um, and someone was saying, you know, well, if you're not into garish kind of prints, what do you do? And I was like, just an accent. You could have a neck neckerchief or a necktie or a shoe or a twilly around your bag or something like that if you don't want to do it massively. Um, so leopard print is is going to be... I saw big. Trini the other day. She had full-on head-to-toe leopard print, but it was mm. all from different brands as well, but it still worked. Did it? Yeah, she had a leopard print dress on, a leopard print jacket, one was like D&G and one was like Zara. Mm -hmm. And then she had some Alaya leopard print um, shoes as well. Nice. And a bag. Nice. It, but she's very statement, isn't she? She, very she can statement. get away with it. She really get, pulls it off. I just was thinking, God, would I look like a yeah Pat Butcher walking down the street? I think I would. Mm, yeah. I, it's the, well, the key thing set, she said was in that was if you were going to mix leopard prints that are all not from the same place, you've got to make sure like the leopard print size is kind of the similar mm -hmm. is similar in size yeah and tonal yeah as well yeah otherwise it just doesn't flow it's very disjointed mm. so it just needs to flow in your outfit but that's for someone that is whose personal style is very like larger than life mm. but for someone that isn't but kind of wants to have a nod to it or an accent then I would just inject a little bit maybe just plain with a jacket or yeah I mean, even she, your lining on a jacket could be leopard print. Yeah. Something there was, like that. Um, somebody sent me, I always get sent leopard print clothes from my gorgeous followers. Um, Do you? Yeah. Everyone goes, have you seen this? You lo yeah. love this. I thought you meant they send you gifts. No, <laughs> no, that'd be great. But they send me like posts. So um, George Atasta. and Asta have done a leopard print crop jacket with like a, what, crew neck. Okay. That's like a bestseller. And it, it, like no one can get hold of it. Really? It's viral. Yeah, it's completely viral. Viral Georgia Asda. Yeah. Who yeah. knew it was such a thing? I know. Well, I had the lady on who used to be, who started Georgia for Asda a couple of weeks ago, Fiona Lambert. Wow. Yeah. She was brilliant. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So leopard print is big. Yeah. Mesh shoes. Okay. Which were How are these jelly were? shoes? Jelly shoes. Mesh shoes. Hang on. Well, autumn, remember winter. That, well, what? They're on my feet at the moment technically we're in August but <laughs> we are yeah we are in August um, but to make them work for autumn winter you are meant to add a sock now it is very controversial you can imagine an 80s jelly shoe or a mesh shoe with a sock and we're not talking a trainer sock we're talking like an ankle sock or a calf sock wow. to make it yeah I mean I'm not wearing that I'm not wearing that, but I'm just giving you Who what the trends are. Who is wearing that? I think in London, internationally, it's a very high fashion kind of vibe. It's not my vibe. No. But I'm more classic. You're very chic. I'm classic. 
I just think if Kate Middleton or Meghan Markle wouldn't wear it, I'm not wearing it. Granted, today, she probably wouldn't be wearing what I'm wearing today. But Meghan Markle would. Classic white T-shirt. You know, you can't go wrong with it. No, um, you can't. So, yeah, and I just think, is I mean, you're a stylist, Martine, and you're always talking about trends, but surely the big, best trend you could ever have is just wear what suits you. Be yourself. Yeah. Be yourself. And you don't have to get caught up in this constant overconsumption. Yeah, exactly. Just, I think you carry it off. I have this thing called the three C's. Mm. If you feel comfortable in something, you'll feel confident. Yeah. And if you're confident, you'll carry it off. It doesn't matter what it is. It's getting those three C's, that first C of being comfortable. And if you're wearing something that isn't you, say, for example, I'm dressing you and I say, oh, you'd suit this gorgeous floral dress and really boho or whatever, and it's not you. You're very Kate Middleton or Meghan Markle, which is very structured, bodycon. You're going to go, I get it, but it's not me. Mm. And if it's not you, you're never going to feel confident in it. You're going to pick at the bits and go, really don't get it. Aesthetically, it works on my body shape, but it doesn't work for my mind. And for me, whenever I work with any client, I always say that I dress the mind as well as the body and the mind is where the magic happens. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I yeah. would look dreadful in kind of like a big, let's say, pure cotton maxi dress, you know, that's like yeah. a bit or like... Or a tulle skirt or something. Yeah, that's not me. Yeah. No, I know. So, but it might work on your body, but it doesn't... F- it doesn't it doesn't tick it doesn't, your style yeah, boxes. It wouldn't like bring the best out of me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things I always say is that when you put an outfit on or you put look at your clothes, how many out of ten does that make you feel? And if it's only six, we need to rethink it. And clothes should make you feel a seven or an eight or a nine or a ten out of ten. Mm. And that's again where the magic is. Because if if you're not feeling good in it, then get rid of it. Yeah. Or don't buy it because it's got to make you feel good about yourself. It's like that little inner switch that goes off that goes, oh yeah, that's me. Yeah. That's me, that's it, I feel it. And I get it when I dress myself, uh, even coming here, I was like, okay, how, how? what do I wear, what do I wear? And I'll get to a point where I'm trying and I'm tweaking and I'm doing this and then I just go, got it. Yeah. And it's that inner flick, flick of a switch that just makes you go, yep, that's it. Mm. No, you're not wrong, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's got to kind of, it's almost an advert for your personality as well. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a cheesy one, isn't it? And I remember hearing this and going, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm. And it's so true that when we look at someone, we judge them straight away. On what they're wearing. On what they're wearing and what they're giving off. Are they smiling? Are they not smiling? Mm. Do they smell? Do they not smell? Do they, and if so, what do they smell of? But we judge someone on 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 their their appearance. (laughs) Yeah. What's the first thing you look at? Is it their bag? Is it? what they're wearing are they trendy are they not and we do it subconsciously so you never get that second chance I do it fully consciously as well you know and that's why there's I mean there's times where I'm just like black t-shirt go with it black t-shirt especially if I'm going to a meeting where don't want to give off any vibe black Mm t-shirt really every time yeah I've got a structured arc it thick good quality black t-shirt that I will wear to a meeting if it's like, you know, no one can read anything into a black t-shirt mm. or that's what I want you to read, which is there's no frills here, bang, that's what I'm presenting myself as. That. No labels, no branding, no nothing, just clear. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I my thought is if I go to an event or something and they say there's a stylist in the room, I need them to know it's me. Right. But equally, uh, my style is that I like to be comfortable in what I wear but it has to have a twist that makes it a bit different to Mm. everybody else Uh, and that can be that I know it's different it might be that it's vintage or it might be that there's something a bit quirky but that for me is with any client is understanding them and you said to me before about accessorizing if you don't like accessorizing because I'm new to accessorizing for me how do I do it for other people but I I switch off Martine Mm. I'm still a stylist but what I like isn't what my client might like so I have to switch it as to what they would like what are those box style boxes that need to be ticked for them to feel good and also it depends on the occasion I suppose as well let's say it's the BAFTAs or something they've got a beautiful gown on and Mm. you think and it's like maybe strapless you want to have a beautiful necklace on and some lovely earrings and some nice jewellery because it's like all out event you know what I mean yeah but sometimes they're not they're not into that 
gorgeous jewellery. They might just be very understated, very quiet luxury, very just all about the dress. Not well, it the depends what the dress is. If you've just got like a simple column black dress, I would say go go large with the jewellery. But if that's not their style. No. Then they might just want well, you to keep were the, it. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, and it's, it's everyone's so different that mm. you just have to take your own opinion out as a stylist and go, what do they want? What will make them feel good? A big earring might go, they, if they don't like their ears or they don't like yeah. something. So you have to focus on what they would like rather than what you like. What comes first in the styling journey? Is it the dress first and then everything else gets styled around, including hair and makeup and accessories? Because if they're going to go, well, no, I'm putting my hair up now or I'm putting my hair down, you're like, well, I've just, you know, got these amazing earrings for you. Now we're not going to see them. Um, so what comes first? Is the it, dress. Is the outfit then dictates everything else? Yeah. 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 And the hair and makeup work as a team. Yeah. Um, to make sure the, that the that, dress sings. Yeah, it, it, and it depends what you want the focal point of the outfit to be. It could be that you've got the black column dress, but mm. the focus is the, is the necklace, in which case the hair would be back or it would be a half up, half down, or it mm. might be the earrings. And you just work with the hair and makeup artists to make sure that you get the right message. And that's also what the client wants as well, that, that they might say, well, I want the focus to be the dress in which case you tone everything else down, make the focus the dress. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's all a team. But I, from my opinion, it's the outfit that comes first. You start with the clothes, then the accessories and the bag and the shoes and then the hair and makeup. I would do. And it's a team. It's a team mm. to create an overall image. Yeah. Okay, so apart from suede and mesh shoes with socks, which I don't think is going to be in my wardrobe, what else will we be wearing? So we're st- t- I remember on the last last podcast we were talking about trainers and what was coming up and we were talking about retro. Mm. So retro is still massive. And we saw throughout spring, summer that the Gazelles, the Special, the Hamble, the Adidas were like rah, everywhere and they still are. Um before that, it was the Jordans. It was the Nike Dunks. Now we've kind of moved on. We're still staying with retro, but the the style of Adidas that we're looking at is the SL72. So um, sounds like a car. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like a car, but it's a retro. It's got a little bit of a a rid. I don't know what the right word is. Um, Has it got like a? A, a zigzag a, kind of rid- a tread yes that's so like got three treads if no. so I have these trainers no we'll pull up a picture okay um, can you get up the SL there we go they're oh, the SL so they've got like a little bit of a that's not what I've got so the, so the brown one um, is sold out everywhere because we're going for brown for this season the brown is already sold out everywhere because people the early adopters of the trends are I'm not being funny, but if I saw a fella coming at me in those brown We're trainers, talking female. I would be instantly like... Would you get the ick? Yeah, like, e go away would from me. Would you? Yeah. So those you can't get. The brown ones with the yellow stripe, I tried. <laughs> uh, because I just thought I was I was a late adopter, not an early adopter. Uh, the So on the same vein... I can see me pulling them off, don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't yeah. want to see a fella wearing them. Yeah, no, there's okay. a certain type of chap that would wear those. And, and that's not the chap for me. No. Not my, that's, then, that's not somebody I'd be attracted to. Fair enough. <laughs> so the next uh, trainer that is the Nike Cortez, okay. again in brown. Um, again, early Can adopters. Can we have a picture of the Nike Cortez, please, Dylan, our fancy assistant, <laughs> who's also taking notes, by the way, because he's... Uh, He's going to buy some SL72s. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> so these are the Nike Cortez. So we're still... These they've look got like a vintage. the ones in um, Forrest Gump. Yeah, probably are. They could be. Yeah. They're like a real retro shit. I feel like they're from the 70s and they brought them back. Yeah, they have. Right, okay. So the brown so one again in potentially the middle there. Potentially might go out with a man who'd wear them. Okay. Okay, maybe. So they've sold out as well. Because they're brown, the early adopters of trends are like, we need these, we have to have these. So this is the What are you wearing them with? Like jeans? Those you're wearing them with barrel leg jeans or you're wearing them with gym leggings and a full sock that you can see. Um, You'll wear them with wide leg trousers. So it's it's a real retro kind of vibe. But equally, if you don't want to wear a trainer, you could wear a brogue or a loafer Mm -hmm. uh, for this season, again, with a sock, visible sock. 
Okay. Like it's a school like, girl, I feel yeah. like that is. Yeah. We're also, you could wear those right now. With, I feel if you're a 50 year old woman though, you're not going to be wearing a sock with a loafer. Well, I would. Would you? Not with a I'm little thinking. skirt, like a school girl skirt. Well, no, I wouldn't. I'd wear it with say something like, um, I'd wear it with, with barrel leg jeans or an ankle length jean. Yeah. So you so could just see a little bit yeah, of it. Yeah, that's a bit and then different. A, and then the I'm suede thinking jacket. like a little like pleated skirt. No, we're not going head. to school. Yeah. We're not, we're not revisiting I feel like that's that really school girlish. So they're your trainers. Yeah. And then we are, last year, the UGG Ultra Minis were massive, weren't they? Yeah. Um, you couldn't get those for love no money. Now it's called the UGG Golden Star. This is going to be the shoe this year that I believe everyone is going the to clog. go nuts for. It's a clog, yeah. So we're still looking at clogs. So they've got a platform on them. You can put the sling back wow. part at the front or at the back. And I would probably They're say basically it's be... like a croc, but an UGG version of a yeah. croc. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yeah. And what are we wearing with that? That you're probably going to wear a wide leg, dra- wide leg trouser. Like a jean, wide legs like these. Yes. Again, yes. my feet are freezing in that. But, I can't even, you know, if Kelly saw me in work freezing my tits off, which is usual, <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm not surprised you've come to work wearing nothing like I always do because I want the heating on all the time. She wants it off. And she'd go mental if I turned up in there. Yeah, but your feet, so because they're, they're sheepskin, they do keep the warmth. Because they're an actual animal product, they're known yeah. for retaining the heat. And if they've got sheepskin on the inside, then you're laughing. So with that in mind, last year we had the Birkenstock Bostons. This okay, year, if you, if at you look at Birkenstock Boston Chunky, now they're only currently available in three colourways, um, but we are looking at these. Oh, if right. they brought yeah, them out in yeah. a different colourway, I, I think I was going to buy these for Grace, but I thought they were a bit masculine. They are quite masculine. I think they'd look nice on little boys. Yeah. But again, you would wear that with... I'm not spending 125 quid though on shoes for little boys. I'll just get them from Shen or something. <laughs> the Shen version. They grow too quick. Well, yeah. Seriously. No, I get that. Freaking Grace is out of her shoes in three months and I've spent 45 quid in Clarks on them. And I'm like... Oh, so now I go on eBay and get That's some. That's such a good idea. And I put hers on eBay. So That's it's such comes, a good idea. Yeah, because I'm, because she about five wears out of them, done. She's out of them. Go on Vinted as well. That's so much quicker. Is it? I yeah. never go on Vinted. I've, I only use Vinted now. Really? Yeah, I've taken everything off eBay. Oh, I love eBay. Yeah, much better. Apologies for interrupting this podcast, but I need to ask a favour. If you're enjoying this podcast so far, then please hit that subscribe button right now. I'll be straight up and honest that I want to see this podcast grow and flourish into something that I'm really proud of. And the only way that I can do that is with your help. So if you've ever learned anything useful from these conversations, then please return the favour by liking, rating, subscribing, and maybe even sharing it with your friends. Thanks very much. Let's get back to the episode. Okay, cool. I quite like them though. Yeah, I like those. Again, with a sock. It's like, it's almost like a mule, but a, a chunkier version of a mule. Yeah. Um, but the, these are the high street trends that we are looking at for this year on in the footwear, as well as cowboy boots. And, which and, I'm sporting today, if you, you want to get a um, close up close of them, please. I feel like I should add my foot because I've got the mesh The on. mesh is always so on trend. We are so on trend. We are so on trend. But yeah, cowboy boots are big. But actually this year, we're meant this season, we're potentially tucking them into jeans. Oh, I'm not doing no, that. No, tucking jeans into them. No, I'm not doing that. No chance. You only get a hint of me. Cowboy boot. Mm. Um, okay, so... So that's, that's your fashion update for this season. Okay, so that's our autumnal yeah. fashion update. I'm There's just, plenty more. Yeah. But anything a, you've thought, wow, I hope that doesn't catch on. Probably the UG. Yeah. The UG thing with socks and also the mesh with socks. That the is, jelly yeah. shoes, mm. the, you know, like the 80s jelly shoes with socks. That I really hope, I hope it doesn't. I mean, fair enough if you're a child. Or well, well, you, we're not. I know, not, but I can't see, you know, in the page, I can't see fabulous women wearing that to some of the meetings that I turn up to. I just can't see it. And I don't know who these people are that are trying to make it happen either. I think they'd probably wear it with a trouser so you wouldn't see the sock. On, well, a jelly shoe. Yeah. If they're turning up to a meeting in a jelly shoe and they're what, you know. But no, what if they turn up with a mesh shoe? Well, it depends. Is that more acceptable? Depend A mesh shoe with no sock, acceptable. Oh, good. 
Yeah, <laughs> and that's you. Yeah, you, you're okay. Phew. You know, and it depends on who the woman is. Do you know what I mean? And how she styled it up, I would say. But I'm thinking anything with a sock is just not right. Fair enough. Yeah. What about a brogue or a loafer? Yeah, not bad because I'm going for yeah, style, comfortable. Um, you can get some really beautiful made shoes, and you can really style them up nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, one of the things is jorts, which is jeans and shorts. So they're not oh, denim like shorts, long. they're long. Yeah. So that's the kind, another vibe that you would wear with um, like your loafers with a sock. Yeah. So it's a very Billie Eilish look, a very Tom Brown kind of designer look. That's the sort of vibe. I that saw you'd be this with. long short trend the other day, actually. And I thought, oh, what do I think of it? Yeah, don't mind it. Could have pulled it off. I actually think I, I think nearly bought some pedal pushers the other day. Did you? Yeah. You were season late, but never mind. No, We've- I know. It was purely because I've just been in work lifting boxes, blah, blah, blah. It was just purely for comfort. I just thought black them, black vest, done for work, sound. I can lift stuff, move stuff comfort I was actually going for. Do you remember when I did that lunch a few months ago? Yes. That I mentioned about yeah. pedal pushes then. See? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Could have been an early adopter. Well, it could have been, but, um, you know, they would have been out of fashion by now. So <laughs> waste of money, not an investment, not an investment piece. No. It was just purely for comfort and work. Um, okay. So I actually was looking at a pair of suede boots. They're YSL boots and they've got like a, they come up to about there and they've got like a fold over and they've got a little YSL, just very discreet there. But again, very, very expensive, yep. for a thousand pounds. And I, I'm thinking, oh, suede, I'll, I'll ruin them. You know, protect them. I know. Even then, I'm ruining them. Well, I, I think you scuff. Choose your moment to wear them. I scuff them the, down the side. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Well, Very it's annoying. inevitable. I don't think. Yeah, it's... I, th- I think they're going to do that anyway. So you, yeah, a I... leather shoe would do that. I don't know how we do it, but we do. It's like you get go faster stripes down the side. Yeah, of your shoes. So... Oh, this, and then they never get wore like my Stuart yeah. Wiseman's that were you know protected in cellophane, still in the box with <laughs> tissue paper around them. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what's, what's going to happen. So you either wear it, batter it, and you've had a great time with it to do it, or not, yeah. or don't do it, or don't do it, yeah. or just just don't no, don't buy YSL ones. In my, I think you've kind of answered your own <laughs> yeah. question there, haven't you? If the question was, what shall I buy them? Do you think it's a good buy? No. You can just talk yourself out. Of it now. Yeah, no, you're not. The Isabel Morant ones are gorgeous. Well, they look like that. They've got that kind of like diamondy heel. Nice. Yeah, they are nice, but hey ho. Mm. Who am I trying to impress anyway? Nobody. Yourself. Yeah, nobody. No. Yeah, but I don't need to impress I don't need to spend a thousand pounds on shoes to impress me. I I impress myself every day, if I'm honest. <laughs> I'm here, yeah. I'm alive, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I've managed another day. Look Get in the mirror in. and think, fucking hell, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish. Um, okay, so okay, so that's kind of what we're going to be buying yeah, if we want to be on trend. But yeah. to be quite honest, a lot of the women we hear from and a lot of the people going to be listening to this podcast, you know, I just can't see them catching on with trends. They're at the stage where they like classic clothes, classic tailoring, classic styles, and perhaps their body shape has changed. Because as mm-hmm. we age, I've really noticed like my body shape has changed as I'm getting older. I think my feet have got bigger. I've been Googling this a lot. And I think either your bones move and they splay out a bit. But honestly, a size seven does not even fit me anymore. I get 7.5 and everything now because it's just for that extra bit of comfort. And I think, well, my feet can't have grown, but I think what they're doing is it's relaxing a bit. Yeah. And and I, I know middle-aged spread is a thing. Not on your feet. I'm, I'm, I'm going to argue it is. But um, that's why I was arguing with my PT the other day. I said, I think your skeleton definitely moves as you get older. He went, no, it doesn't. I was like, well, I'm telling you it does. Because if you look at Jennifer Aniston in Friends era, series one, and then look at her now, she's 100% wider and she hasn't put on weight. She's right. wide. She's gone wider. Right. I think... I'm going to get the data on this. I think I actually screenshotted it and sent it to him because I was right, 100%. But your skeleton does get wider. But I think your hips as well move when you... Of course. When you... Or if you have a baby. Yeah, or, if you yeah, have a baby. Course, and yeah. then they move back or they don't. Well, hips definitely don't mm. move back. But um, yeah, 100%. So, But also what happens in middle age is middle age spread is really your ability to cope with cortisol. Cortisol levels go up. As you enter the menopause, that makes you put on weight around the middle and it sticks there. Yeah. It doesn't happen to all women, but it happens to, you know, very, very common. Yeah. So how are we dressing when, you know, we get older and our bodies change? I think the first thing is stop giving yourself a hard time mm. because I think it's very common. And I 
speak to a lot of women that contact me and say, I, I don't know what my body shape is. It was this, and I wish it was again. How do I get back? How do I dress for the new shape? What do I do? I don't know what this is. I think the first thing is, A, don't give yourself a hard time. B, try not to look back at who you were and try and be that person and have that body shape, but accept where you are now. Um, and That's good advice. I yeah. Wish, I mean, cries that easier said than done though it a hundred percent and you know we were chatting about that before that it, it's so hard you know sometimes we look at pictures of ourselves when we were younger and go god i wish i appreciated my size then compared to what i am now i wish i was happy then but i wasn't happy back then but so it's kind of okay let's let's take a benchmark of where we are now and then let's readdress and go this is what i have now i'm going to try and learn to love it and accept it acceptance is half your battle rather than trying to be something else and then say, okay, right, what, how do I dress my shape as it is right now? It's not to say it's forever, but it might be and learn to love the bits. So it's first of all, finding the bits of you that you love about yourself. It doesn't have to be the bits that you don't, but we need to focus on the bits that you do and let's learn to accentuate and show off those bits. So if you said to me, you know, I always ask any new client, give me five things that you love physically about yourself. And they go, well, I don't like my stomach. And I don't, I say, okay, breathe, take a second. And let's go back to the question. What do you love about yourself? And it's the hardest question. And I won't leave until, I won't move on until we've had at least three. So it can be your nails. It can be your eyes. What can we do to I'd be gutted if mine was the nails? I would be but, but that's what some people say. That, really? Yeah, they hate their bodies. They really dislike their... Hate is a very strong word, but I have had that with body dysmorphic clients. Um, and are they genuinely, you're looking at them and you're thinking, God, shut up, you're great. No. You've got great boobs, you've got great ass, you've got the great... You know what I mean? No. Are you looking at I'm, them through totally different eyes? Yeah, so if I said to somebody um, that I couldn't see you know, what don't you like about, oh, I've got such a big tummy and I've got big boobs and I've got big bingo wings and I've got this. And when you see them, you go, you've got nothing because it's how you see yourself. So I don't see you how you see yourself. My job is to show you how we all see you and take that pressure off what yourself. What if genuinely you think, yeah, I can agree with that? Do you ever say, well, yeah, I can agree with what well, you're saying. Well, I wouldn't say I won't agree with what you're no. saying. I'll kind of say, right, okay, so if that's the bit you don't like then Thanks. let's address that and then let's look at ways. So for example, if somebody says, I don't like my tummy, I've all of a sudden got this pouch and this is the most common one. Yeah. I've got this pouch and I don't know where it's come from. I used to have a waist, now I haven't. So I always say, look at yourself in the mirror and it's a hard thing to do, but look at yourself in the mirror in bra and knickers and you want to see where your narrowest bit from under the bust mm -hmm. to the top of your knickers. Where's the narrowest bit? Usually it's moved from where your natural waist is. It's moved up to just below the bust. So that is the bit, the smallest bit is the bit that we focus on and mm -hmm. we make sure that you go in there. So if you get a, something that's got a inverted commas waist, that it sits higher than where your waist was. Now, if you didn't have a waist in the first place, you focus on the fact of, just under the bust and then is where you where it comes in and then it floats out or skims mm, the tummy area. Like a lovely skater style. Yeah. 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 Or even a shift dress. Yeah. And there's some gorgeous dresses out there and they give the illusion that you have no tummy because it just skims over. What's a shift dress? I would say this dresses, term getting thrown around. It's kind of, it. It, it fits on the bust, comes in under the bust and then just drops. Right. So it just, it doesn't, the defined waist is just under the bus. It's like Empire Line. Why is it called a shift dress? I don't know. Because it's trendy. <laughs> really? It's, it's just a definition. Empire Dylan, Line can you Princess Google Line. that? Why is it called a shift dress? Is it because people on shift would wear them? Or, <laughs> I'm thinking factory workers. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah, shift dress. style. Yeah. Um, and can you get me an example of a shift dress up, please? Um, okay, great. Um, yeah, I completely agree with you. You know, hundred percent your body changes but yeah I think that's really critical advice you've got to love where you are now don't, don't look back mm. fantastic you live that life great if only we could appreciate what we had yeah then you know as well that's great advice too so okay yeah you're absolutely right let's look at where we are now and dress for who we are now yeah 
But also, you know, a bit more about that is if you're that's if you're looking for dresses or peplum tops. Okay, um, here we go. Sorry. The, in the 1920s, designers such as Chanel started to create loose corsetless dresses. These new dresses worn by flappers were the antidote antidote to stiff Edwardian dresses. It was easy women. It's easy for women to shift or move around in a shift ah. dress, hence the name. Well, there, you there go. we go. Well, there you go. I think that is interesting because we use it. We use this. It, you know, it's not like airline where it's like we know what that means. Yeah, you know, or a mini skirt. We know exactly what that means. But shift dress, I've always wondered what that means. And I suppose it's essentially anything that you feel comfortable to move in. Yeah, because I thought it was a particular kind of style that had no sleeves Just or something. In that one, she's got a, it's wasted, but that's not a shift dress. Which one? The sec the second the one. The second in one there. in. Yeah, yeah, but it's easy to move in. Yeah, so. Therefore, we Therefore, could put it in shift. shift. <laughs> put everything in shift. But equally, you know, if you're looking shift, for jeans. Shift gym gear. <laughs> shift, yeah. If you're looking for um, jeans or trousers, it make sure they're high-waisted because right. you need them to sit above your tummy if that's where you're your carrying problem area weight. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Then it, equally, women will say, but then it gives me this big pouch. So what do I do then? It's making sure that the top that you wear over stops just below the the uh, the widest part, which is your tummy. Okay, so what about, um, we're standing there on a bra and knickers and we hate it and we want to disguise our tummy a bit more. Should we be getting some nice structured underwear under there? Yeah. I so, go back to like Trini and Susanna days. Yeah. You know. And yeah, it probably hasn't aged well, that show. But actually, some of the advice that they were giving was really great. You need great underwear on. I think I think that show was great yeah. for creating an, an awareness of being a stylist or mm. what stylists do. But it was very sensationalised for TV. So they took you from old and frumpy or whatever, you know, wearing the ter worst clothes ever to looking incredible. Mm. But as soon as Trini and Susanna left, those women and gentlemen had no idea how they'd done that to be yeah. able to recreate it. That's the difference between someone like me. We take you on a journey uh, slowly to get you to where you want to be and take you out of your comfort zone slowly. And your comfort zone after six months is totally different to where it was six months ago kind of thing. So I would always say, going back to the question, is shapewear is great. Um, there are some great brands out there. I'm a great believer that John Lewis is is a great brand for shapewear that's affordable. Better than Skims, better than Spanx. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yes. I think a lot of it you pay for the name. I don't believe from personal experience that Skims gives as much support without rolling down at the, at the waist because what you need is for it to almost suck everything mm. in. It's got to come out somewhere. But equally, if you bend over in a pair of Skims shapewear, they roll down. That's what I personally have found. Right. Um, Spanx, I think, is is a great product, but I think there's cheaper alternatives that do exactly the same out there. Right, okay. So start with good underwear, good bra. Yeah. If you, you can change, you can drop a size if you wear the right bra. So if your bra is fitting you correctly, and I do what I call the twang test. So you go talk to a client and say, what, what bra size are you wearing? And they'll say, I'm wearing a 38B and they're a size eight. So, you know, the 38 comes from the back measurement and that's where all the support comes from. So if you don't like back fat, you will always, as a woman, go for a bigger back size. So it's not getting any support because it's too big on the back. So if you're a size eight, you'll probably be a 30 back for it to sit and support you. Then what they do is they'll go for something that fits the breast tissue in a bra, but normally it might sit out at the at the in between the boobs. It'll sit out so the wire isn't necessarily sitting in the right place. So it will then not fit correctly. But because they're a, a, a woman will get the support from the strap on the shoulder, they'll adjust the strap. You then find because all the support's coming from that to lift the breast tissue. It's raising the back strap, you know, where your hooks are at the back. Mm -hmm. So that will be yeah, higher. Arch like yeah. That. yeah. That's a pure, that's a, uh, that's a, oh, I forgot the right word. What's the right word? That's a true sign that your bra is too big and it's not, it's an ill-fitting bra. Mm. If it's riding up at the back, it means that your 
getting all the support from the shoulder and not from where it's meant to come from, which is the actual back support. So I always do the twang test, which is where you pull it. And if it pulls out really far, it's far too big for you. And oh, then I say, okay, then. <laughs> try on me, try on me. And then they'll do it and it, it literally will move maybe an inch. <laughs> And that's because yeah. it's supporting where the support is meant to come from. Rather than the shoulder, and we get those dents in our shoulders if you've got big boobs, you get the dents in your shoulders because all the support is coming from that and not from where it's meant to come from, which is actually all from your ribs all the way around to the back. I mean, I used to have humongous boobs. I've had reduction, et cetera. Um, so I feel your pain. I used to wear minimizers all the time and... Tuck them under your armpits. Yeah, massive boobs. Anyway, now I don't even bother with bras. I just wear like crop tops. Do you? Yeah, can't be arsed with it. So I'd be down by my knees if I did that. I know. I um and I, every time I go in, so wherever they're you're wearing the wrong size, I'm like, because I, I just buy thirty four double D every time. Are we not a thirty four? No, I know everyone says that, and I'm like, well, that's what I feel. feel. I'm not wearing a thirty two because it kills me. Because it, it feels like you can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. That's because you're not used to it. Yeah. So but equally, why would I want to go through life and not like feel like I can't yeah, but breathe? If you don't, though, yeah, but I want to be back in my shift, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my shift era <laughs> where shift is everything. Shift is life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the shift life, yeah. But if you get the right, if you do have a bust that is ample, let's say, then if you've got the right support, it lifts them, lengthens the torso, yeah. drops you down a size. Yeah. We've gone from four boobs to two boobs because yeah. the, we've got the right amount of fabric to en encase the breast tissue. And straight away you go, oh my God. And I can do it just by looking at someone. I pull the straps and tuck it, you know, pull the back in. And they go, oh my God. So the right underwear is your foundation, mm -hmm. really. Having the right underwear, having a knicker that doesn't dig in. So when you wear a fitted dress, you can't see your knicker line or go for a thong over something that's got a full brief. So it's understanding that, but also you can get some great support from your knickers that are every day as well as the Spanx kind of John Lewis yeah. shapewear. So having the right foundations is key because that's what creates that silhouette correctly. Mm. And then from there, we then build on that to the next layer which okay. is your vests, which is your, and then it's, if you're looking at vests, you make sure you've got the right um, V-neck or crew neck or polar neck or turtle neck or scoop neck, whatever neck it is that makes your face look longer or doesn't broaden your shoulders or narrows your shoulders or makes your boobs look smaller. So it's all those different things. And then we work our way down yeah. through to the waist, through to the thighs, through to the calves, to the ankles, the feet. Um, I had a client the other day going back to your feet comment uh, and she's put weight on um, in her feet. Right. But so she's gone from a, si uh, from a six to a six and a half. Right. And so it is a common thing. But equally, when you lose weight, you lose weight off your feet as well. And you can drop half a size when you lose weight. I think I've gone wider and definitely more splayed out. Mm. And now, I don't know, maybe it's just me that now I'm banging my toe on the front. Every time I wear a size seven and a trainer, I'm hitting my toe on the front. I'm like, what the fuck? What is going on here? <laughs> See, that only happens to me when I need to cut my toe nails. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I always think that. I think, God, this is pressing on my toe. But then I, when I'm running, my running trainers are all half a size bigger. But they say reason. you should do that yeah. anyway. And I'm thinking maybe all my shoes should be bigger. I should stop ramming my feet into these I shoes think now. So. Yeah, I think that's... I think I've got to the point where I need to stop ramming my feet into shoes. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so we start with our layering, which yeah. is the underwear. Yeah. Okay. Underwear is the foundation and then work your outfit. Again, it needs to give you... It needs to spark joy, to quote Marie Kondo. Yeah. Your clothes should spark joy. I appreciate a basic vest is not going to do that. But it could be that the fabric makes you go, oh, that feels really nice. Mm. Or it could be that the jeans make your waist look a little bit smaller or whatever it might be or the length of something. So it's just finding those little bits that make you go, hmm, I like yeah. that. I always think a woman in a blazer is so nice to dress up any kind of outfit. You know, even if, let's say you have got these like troublesome areas where, and you do need to wear empire lines or yeah. you do need to wear, you know, your waist has moved or you have got a bigger boss, but just putting on a blazer at the end of it, you know, is just je ne sais quoi. I am so with you. Like for me, I'm known 
for buying blazers mm. because she's always wearing blazers. And actually a tip is I, because if you like that sharp blazer look, the best place is men's blazers. And there are some brilliant finds in charity shops. I think I've got three now that are sharp lapels, exaggerated shoulders, and I think they were three or five pounds. Wow. So if you can, if you've got the time, you can create your own unique look that no one else is going to be able to replicate and it'll cost you a fraction of the price. But for me, a blazer, it can hide a multitude of sins. It can give you a little bit of confidence, but it's just that finishing touch. I swear by blazers yeah, and jackets. Same. I just think they're great. Um, last time you were here, we were chatting off the podcast and you were telling me, oh, I've got a bit of a secret. And I was like, what is it? Oh God, what and was you it? were saying, I think I'm going on this morning. And oh. I was like, Oh my God, amazing. That's amazing. And then lo and behold, three days later, I see you on this morning. So how did that go? Ugh, best thing I've ever, ever done. What As was I, your style segment about? Colour. Right, okay. It was all around, it was January and it was talking about the colour of the season, that red was going to be massive for spring, summer and that peach was going to be a big colour and how you can inject colour. It was also talking about what colours are right for you based on your skin tone, mm. your hair, your eyes. So it was it was a very brief se segment, but it was honestly the best thing I've ever done and can't wait to do it again. Um, yeah, I just absolutely loved it. And, and actually it was nice to be able to share my knowledge far and wide to mm. people that would never have really heard of me before. How did that have an impact on your business? A big impact. Um, I think it gave me kudos. Mm. Um, a couple of big brands got in touch that didn't know about me before. Um, old clients that hadn't worked with me for quite some time would come out of the woodwork and say, oh my God, I need to book in with you before you get too busy. I know it's been ages, but mm. can, I, can I book in with you? So that was great. And it obviously generated new followers on social media, new projects came in with different companies. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's been brilliant. Really, really good. Who knew that it would, it can transform. More TV works come from it, which hasn't come out yet. So yeah, it's been, it's been ace. And what's next for you? What are your goals for, let's say, you know, we're talking about autumn, so we're practically going to be in 2025. Yeah. What are your goals for 2025? For me, it's, Twofold, I want, threefold actually, more media work, massive yep. media work. I feel like that's where I belong. I also want to create more concierge clients, um, which is where I manage their wardrobes so they don't have to shop. But also I feel like, and this could probably coupled, be coupled with the media work is, Show. I feel like I've got a big message and I was saying it to you before that I want to show women how beautiful they are. And I'm not saying, and I, I totally understand that we all have those inner critics, but I want to be able to show women and hold space for them to explore their own beauty without fear and show them how we all see them. And in whatever guise that is, I'm putting it out to the universe to be manifested. Um, but I just feel like I've got a really strong message that I want to, I just want to show people how beautiful they are because we are men and women, but, but women are far worse critics of themselves. So, I've, so initially that would be where my attention would go, but having been there myself and still am sometimes that I used to be a size 18 and I still see myself that way. I understand, you know, the inner voices that we have and, I just want to be able to make people a little bit happier. Someone once said to me when I was a kid, um, what do you want to do when you're older? And I went, I want to make people happy. I want to make them smile. And I think just sitting here now, right now, it's like, okay, so that's, that's what it is. That's what it is that I want to do is to make people smile and make them happy by showing them just how beautiful they are. I think that's a perfect place to finish. You I couldn't have said it cry. better. <laughs> I was going to cry then. I was like, oh, oh, that's a, that is, that's such a great ethos and mantra to have though. Mm. And it comes from a good place. Yeah. Because people think it can be, you know, you're talking about shopping, we're talking about, you know, trends, we're talking about this, that and the other materialism, let's yeah. say, you know, but 
at the end of it, it's how that impacts people. Like we said, it's your first impression. It's how you present yourself. And that, you know, you must see a massive change in people, you know, when you dress them up. And like, let's say they've been like dowdy for 20 years. And like, yeah. no, they, they've never taken care of themselves. And they never, they feel guilty for spending money on themselves. And then like, they're like, no, I'm going to do this. I want to do this for me. You know, you tend to find that that happens yeah. with women who have looked after children and the children have gone to school or, or university, the, and, or university and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, I've forgotten who I am. Mm. What? Who am I? Am I still that person I was? But then there's now a new world out there and I don't know where to start because I've just lived in machine washable gym stuff mm. or stuff that you know, just is is easy to wash with kids and run around and bend down and all this. But who am I? And to see that evolution of somebody, and it's a slow process and we do it at different stages because everyone's so different. But to see it, and, and I've had it with a 16-year-old through to a 65-year-old, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful to see. And it's so rewarding and it is why I do what I do. And yes, it's glamorous. People think it's glamorous, but it's just, it's a, it's a very humbling thing mm. to do. And it's a, I'm so blessed and thankful that I can do that day in, day out and just make people smile and happy. Well, that is a wonderful place to finish. Thank you so much, Martine, for coming in again today. Thank it's you. been wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>